This is Rocco with Shaman. It's with the Dev. How's everyone doing? We're doing pretty good. Awesome. Doing great. Yeah. Congratulations on the single, Shameless uh, Life. Tell you about Shameless Life? Um, yeah. Okay. So Shameless Life, I wrote it, the lyrics at least, and um, I wanted to write something that was pretty raw. And I didn't want it to be just about like musicians, but just artists in general. Kind of when you become one and when you choose one, you kind of sell your soul and you sell a little bit of yourself to every audience member that sees you on stage and behind the scenes and at music videos and whatnot. So I wanted it to be a not so pretty and rainbows kind of song and show you a little bit of the knit and grit, but then like pretty much also the glam that everyone maybe sees naturally on the interview. And then you see a little bit behind the scenes too. But everyone also has like different reasonings too. I, me as a singer, I only write lyrics ever in this band. Um, but when Ryan and Barrett and Chris and John, they all write their own parts. And sometimes people bring in different concepts of the song too. The track is cool. The track is too cool. I mean, I'm sorry. I love it. Your vocals are amazing. Very neat style. Very fascinating style. I love it actually. Very good style. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you yeah. so much. Yeah, the video was pretty sick. What is it like filming during the pandemic? Uh, I mean, it was it was challenging. You know, obviously we, we had to be safe and uh, make sure that everybody involved was was felt comfortable. Number one and number two, obviously uh, safety. You know, as far as um, social distancing, yeah, as precautionary measures, limited all that amount of people, um, and and it also forced us to to conceptually be a little bit more creative with what we wanted to do because obviously, like we couldn't have massive amounts of people or crowds or anything like that. So the, the neat thing about shooting a video at, at, during this time is it really pushes your creative juices and ideas kind of to like get it going into like a flow of, oh, okay, like how do I get the most out of the, the least, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, and so it was, it was cool. I mean, we had a good time. I'm, the best part for me was the fact that we, we did it and we were able to do it and we weren't just settling on like a lyric video or, you know, we had what we had thought about for a second doing um, like an animated thing because it was yeah. like, okay, well, maybe that's just the best route to be safe for everybody. But, um, you know, I think people still want to see music videos and as artists, we still want to get content and, and things out there for everyone. So, yeah, we, we definitely were pretty excited to get it done and, and wrapped and uh, get it out there. Yeah, and Giselle at uh, Black Arts Films, she uh, stepped in and she actually wrote a lot of the script. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So she, she really helped us out a lot. So. I think this was actually one of our, this was our first video where we had a storyline and like a real storyline of exactly what scene and how we wanted things to go. Um, with Queen of the Dan, Aaron Berkshire, he's the one who recorded that. That music video came out amazing, but we were kind of like rolling with the punches. And the funny thing was is, during that music video, I think thoughts were coming up to us like at the very moment. With Shameless Life, it was we had a story to really portray and Giselle did a phenomenal job. One thing that we did want to portray on it was just like life as a regular life. We didn't really want to do the face masks and whatnot. So a cool thing is, is on the crowd surfing scenes that you see before and after the music video, it actually is my bandmates and it's um, our backup dancer. We had a backup dancer, Kelly. She was in like the little green screen splits, like scenes and whatnot. We actually had to like balance me on a, was it a basic? Road case. Road yeah, road a road case. case. Yeah. And I had to like literally do 90 second abs workouts and like keep my head up while the band was moving me around because unfortunately with the pandemic and whatnot, you can't actually have a real crowd, but we didn't want to portray anything that wasn't what we consider usual and when we think of concerts and stuff we think of you know crowd surfing and crowds and everything so Giselle had a really good idea when it came to that too. It, it has to feel uh, fantastic almost getting half a million hits in the first few weeks that has to be this like whoa you know. Pretty overwhelming and exciting yeah. at the same time it's really cool yeah. we're blown away. Yeah. yeah. It, I mean, people from all over the world. I mean, you know, like there's uh, comments, you know, in Spanish and, and, uh, all, other kind languages, of, and all, all kinds of other languages on there. I mean, it's, it's, it's great. It's starting it's to become a fun game of like Google Translate. Yeah, exactly. Trying to figure out what people are saying. <laughs> yeah. A lot of but that's what music does. It brings people together. Right. Yeah, 
that, that's what actually brings people together music sometimes you know it's actually music's kind of a beautiful thing if you look at it closely you know that is true yeah, absolutely yeah. have you heard yourself on the radio yet how did you how did it feel if you heard yourself uh yeah we did we were played on 101.1 wjr we've had another a bunch of other radio stations pick us up 98.9 uh, rock in jacksonville um a lot there's, there's, there's a few yeah. others yeah but yeah i mean it, it was awesome feeling um you know hearing the song on the radio and all that kind of stuff it's always a, a warm spot in my heart you know i love yeah. uh listening to all that stuff and staying up and, and waiting for it to come on yeah and I, mean, I don't think it ever gets old. Yeah. It no. <laughs> I mean, I, I, you know, I've, I've been in some other bands where I've had songs on the radio and still to this day, it's just like, it's, it's a magical feeling. I mean, granted radio is kind of like going away. You know, a lot of people listen to Spotify and YouTube for their music and they ingest it in other ways, but still like to, to sit in your car, listen to the DJ talk a little bit. And then all of a sudden your song comes on. It just feels like you're part of this like cool, like history in this club that of, of musicians and artists who've had the opportunity and been lucky enough to have their music presented in that fashion. Um, so yeah, it definitely is like, it's surreal and it's it's amazing. And, you know, obviously the mix is a little bit different. Whenever I hear it on the radio, I'm like, yeah. oh man, it sounds a little bit weird, but that's just how the radio, you know, that that's how the format uh, kind of like plays it. But um, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, sure. we got lucky with Broken Lies, Queen of the Damned and Shameless they all got radio time and they still do get radio time. But even though we're the third single in, it still never gets old to hear like that brand new single the first time on the radio. Um, with Shameless, we were on a Friday and I believe Saturday also. Saturday like, and Sunday. Yeah, Saturday and yeah. Sunday. And I literally had to like run into my car, turn on the radio because I just wanted to hear it like live. And even though I've probably done that a million times before with all the other songs, it, it literally doesn't lose its charm. So I heard you guys are going to play a track or two for me. Yeah. Yeah, we can yeah. we can do a couple of songs acoustic. We're gonna we're gonna give it like a the old college try. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just let us know whenever you're ready. I am right now, actually, right now. All right. You want to do Shameless first? Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> are we gonna count this off? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Take my 
bravo. I got to get my dog. I got me there. I can't. Well, either way, but. Thank you. That was the first time we've ever tried to do that song acoustic. So play on the guitar. And yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that was it. That was the world premiere of Shameless Life Acoustic. So. Oh my God, we've never actually seen that song acoustic. No, I, I know. I think we did okay. Hell yeah, high five. Congrats. Kristen, congrats. Ashley, stop. Please, guys, be nice. I had sick dance moves back here. Yeah. Oh, guys, bravo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hopefully it translated well acoustically. Yeah. It sounds great. I'm gonna try my best to whistle. I know how to whistle, but it takes time. Okay, I'm just gonna yeah, yeah, that's that's decent. It's better than I can do. So. Yeah. The song is fantastic. Wow. Even unplugged and it's still beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, man. Appreciate you. Would you like to hear one more? Yeah, sure. Why not? Do you want to do Queen Thrill? Let's see. I think we worked on we, we worked on doing Queen, so let's do it. Oh, did we do solo No. Got it. No, it just like I'll, I'll take we'll, it. You'll be just I'll see. Yeah. <laughs> I tried I had to play the we'll see how that works out by that. All right, ready? Yeah, I'll see you ready. Right. Mm -hmm. Remember, John doesn't only play bass, he has to also have some groove. He's multi-talented. You need groove to play bass. Right, right. Yeah, you see it in the dance room. <laughs> <Yeah, pretty laughs> he was doing this. I was literally, we were having a duel with it. We were like. <laughs> dance battles, man. Everybody's a winner. Everybody's a winner in a dance battle. 
Uh, do you think you guys can ever do a Fleetwood Mac cover? If you guys ever heard of them? Wait, say that again? Fleetwood Mac cover. Yes, if we would ever do a Fleetwood Mac cover. Uh, yeah, I mean, I yeah, we've done awesome. we've done two covers. We've done a Foo Fighters, Times Like These, and we've done the Pussycat Dolls, Don't Ya? Yeah. yeah. I think, you know, with Nikolai and obviously with her, her vocals, it does lend itself to a Fleetwood Mac, even heart, like yeah. Barracuda. I mean, Ooh, maybe Barracuda. maybe on the horizon. Um, but that's actually a really good suggestion. And like I don't think we've ever like mentioned Fleetwood Mac. So you may have just sparked something in us, which I think we may try to like, you know, venture down that road. But um we're you know, down for mostly anything. Yeah, I mean, I mean, as long as covers as I feel like for us is making it our own, you mm -hmm. know, and, and not just I mean, some songs, when you cover them, it's hard to make it your own. You kind of just pay tribute, and it's more of like a tribute song as, as opposed to a cover song, yeah. in, a, in a sense where you're like, hey, this song is so good. You just want to do it kind of like how they did it because it, it feels right. Um, with, with like the Pussycat Doll song, we've been playing it live uh, for a while now, and like, but we totally rewrote it. Like, we took what that was and made it more of like a, a, a new metal, genty kind of like... <laughs> Like, I remember when like we, a breakdown song yeah. so like it, it, it's definitely interesting and fun and it, it raises the eyebrows of people but once they get to once we get to the chorus they're like All the oh my gosh now. I yeah. know that song you know it's it's cool it's interesting to see uh do you think you would ever do a dreams cover right now if you had the chance to dreams cover a what cover a dreams cover and I'm talking about the Fleetwood Mac cover I'm a dreams do you think you guys dreams are song dreams the song dreams yeah, uh, do you think you guys are fit for that or, or another one? I know the song, not too well, but I know the vocals a little bit. And I feel like I could do it. It just, the one thing that I think when we, we choose covers, because I wanted to do a Fleetwood Mac cover. I also want to do an Alanis Morissette song, which is interesting enough. But um, we have to make sure that we feel it. I don't think we release anything cover or original that um, isn't coming from the heart and we don't have some kind of correlation with either emotions or like life stories to it so i like dreams as long as everybody else likes the song dreams and then we feel like we can give you our 100 percent because we don't necessarily ever want to do a cover that's just as good if we're going to do something we want it to have some variation so if we're not offering you the exact same thing we're offering you either something better or something different so we would just have to play around and see how dreams would turn up to be honest yeah all right yeah, you guys sound like, uh, you guys sound, imagine metal, but then like with soft rock. It's kind of like, that's your kind of band. And it's a fascinating style the most. It's a fascinating yeah. style. We make jokes know? that I sing very bluesy and then I joined like a metal band. So I guess if you take like a bluesy singer that writes pop and put her in like a metal-ish band with like double drums and everything, then we, the dev happens. <laughs> like, <laughs> We, we call ourselves hard rock. I think that's the closest because we're not metal, but we're not like rock or soft rock. So we just go by hard rock because it's like somewhere in the middle. Can I show you this? Um, I, can I show you one of my lines from the song that I've been practicing? Can I show you it? One of my yeah. yeah, go ahead, man. All right. I want to break free. I want to break free. Is it like that? Is that how it goes, or the Queen song? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're doing it a lot better than I could do it. <laughs> like, I don't. I'm not even attempt it because that's that, he's hard. You know, Freddie Mercury is like insane to try and like sing along to. So yeah, yeah. All right, you guys. All right, thank you. But we can, you know, if you ever want to do a cover of like, oh, one of my favorites from them is another one, "Bites the Dust," or like. Crazy yeah, little thing called love. Yes. I think I used to know that one. It's like, or was it? We can we can work something out. We'll get something together. We're like, we'll throw down the music and you do the vocals or something, and we'll get her like a backups or something. We'll, 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 we'll work something out for you. <laughs> I don't know that much of Queen, but I do listen to their music, and I'm kind of like um one of my singing style is kind of one of those soft things. I can sing "Fly Me to the Moon" very beautifully. But I am kind of with rock. I'm kind of soft rock. That's my kind of voice line, because like I think it's really cool that you're listening to different kinds and you're figuring it out. Because I, the way I learned music is the same way that you're doing it. 
where I would just um, constantly listen to different artists and different bands. And even if I didn't like an artist for their style, I would like it for their like writing techniques or whatnot. With my favorite artists are Celine Dion, just because I feel like she has a phenomenal vocal technique. Serge, because Damien and Serge have a very interesting style. And then Lacey Stern from Flyleaf. So it's when you find an artist that you really like, what you want to do as like a singer, or that's what I would recommend is practice that artist as much as possible, especially if they're in your range. And then once you get a little bit comfortable, switch it up and just constantly teach yourself something new because you'll never really know unless you constantly like look. It has to be hard releasing uh, music during the pandemic. Are you adapting to putting music out, not even uh, touring to back it up? Are you guys starting to adapt to it or you guys already have? Um, it wasn't easy per se. Uh, it wasn't an option to stop playing music in general, but during the pandemic, there is a way of possibly up keeping or maintaining something. You just have to have different protocols and precautions. So, I mean, I remember when we were right here where we're at right now is actually a practice space where we recorded the music video, where we practice. And one of the reasons why the music video was recorded here even was because bars weren't open. Um, you couldn't have venues, with lots of people. So practices, we would stay separate. Um, mm -hmm. Ryan and Barrett had a weird like foot handshake in order to say hi and bye to each other. And um, when we went into the studio, there were times where we couldn't even be all together bunched up in a room because for the safety of like any audio engineer people that are in there or like everyone in general, you want to keep a bit of a distance and sometimes wearing those masks really, it really sucks. You can't breathe, especially me as a singer. I have to keep distance from almost everybody. But with where there's a will, there's a way. And we kind of figured it out. We did a couple live streams and, you know, we always made sure that we were feeling good before we met up with each other. And we did a couple live shows with WGRR and 98.9. So even though we didn't get live concerts, we still kind of brought the concerts to people. Yeah. And, you know, I think a lot of bands tend to feel like, oh, there's no point in putting out music until you can go and tour and play shows for it. But you know, it's a different world that we live in. And so we, especially for us, you know, as, as we're continuing to grow and grow, um, I think for us, it's just more important to just keep getting content out, be present, you know, um, and continue to release music. And obviously, you know, when we're able to go play, um, we'll go play. Like we have a show here in April um, here in Orlando, because obviously the state is a little bit more open and, and you know, it's, it's going to be like a seated show and people have distancing and I'm sure there's masks and all that, but it'll feel good to get back on stage. And, you know, granted, it's not like the tours and what we kind of expect to be doing. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, the great thing about this medium, like art and music in general, is that the whole purpose is to be creative. So there really shouldn't be like one set formula. I mean, I know like in rock and roll history, that's always like, oh, make a record, then tour for it. There's like a cycle of things, but we're in like a weird time and it's a new world and with social media and everything. So like the best part about it is you can just be as creative as you want. Yeah. So however you want to put your music out. I mean, like what she was saying, we did a ton of live streams and, you know, acoustic stuff and, and we're, you know, TikTok and Instagram and all that. But sometimes it kind of, you know, you miss the live interaction with, mm -hmm. with the people, but, um, you know, you just, you just have to keep going. You know, if you, if you love it, you're going to find a way to get yourself out there and to continue to do it. So yeah, our two most watched videos that we've ever released, ironically, have been put out during pandemic. So it depends how you look at it. I think when we released Queen, the pandemic literally just started. Um, it was March yeah, and March yeah, March 6th. And when we released Queen, we did not think it was going to do so well because we were nervous that, you know, people had other things on their mind aside from listening to new music. But ironically, just a few weeks in, people are already sick and tired of staying at home. So I believe, and I think it's a possibility that the reason why our first music video hit to that 100,000 mark was because everyone was stuck at home and they needed to watch something. And then even now, a lot of artists are, they're working on collabs or they're working on like covers, but when we released a whole new brand new single and everything, and there's not a lot of people in our area that it's doing that, that's probably another reason why this new song, Shameless Life, turned out so well. is because we didn't stop when we just kept on going and everybody needs something to watch. It starts to get stale eventually. 
Gotham states are opening up with uh, full ca uh, captivity and no mask. Any plans to tour those states for the summer? So, yeah, uh, <laughs> right now we, um, so we're gonna, we're gonna be in definitely South Carolina, Tennessee and Alabama in April, end of April. You're the first to hear that actually. Yeah, you're actually oh, wow. the first. Yeah. We're gonna tell, right we're gonna tell you right now. Yeah. And then we may have, we may be adding two more like dates. So it's gonna be like a little run. And mm -hmm. I, you know, for us, it'll be great to obviously A, get on the road, B, play live music, but it'll also be a good test to kind of see what the <laughs> world is, at, you know, where, where everything is. Yeah. Um, because in this, you know, obviously in different parts of the country, like what you were saying, there's different rules and things are mass, no mass capacities, no capacities. And um, so, you know, it, it's definitely going to be interesting. I mean, I don't think we're at a point now where it, I don't think they're going to be canceled. You know, like we had a few shows set up in Florida in back in July of last year. And obviously those never came through because people had said, oh, well, you know, we're going to get back to shows, you know, by the end of 2020. And obviously it just it didn't happen. Yeah, it wasn't going to happen. So one, um, one was actually the day of like hours before it was. Yeah. Yeah. Know, yeah. yeah like so, we literally were yeah. waiting. And I remember when we found out that that show got canceled, I called Ryan and I was like almost at tears. <laughs> And so I think now we're just excited to finally get our toes back wet and go on tour. Yeah. The only reason why we only have three specific places that we know for sure are touring is, is, is because of those. Yeah. That reason the States, those States literally are having shows. They're doing them now. And, uh, you know, hopefully by the summer, fall, I mean, yeah, we'd like to get out there. I mean, we, as a band, we can play like smaller capacity venues and, um, you know, so we can do like the bigger and, you know, we've done like the house of blues, but we can also do the smaller rooms. And so for us, you know, the good thing about it is, is people want to get out and see music and if there's it's supply and demand, you know, and so if people want it, you know, we, we want to jump on that opportunity and get out there and be the first ones if we can, you know, obviously safely, but, you know, we want to bring the dev to your hometown kind of, so to speak. So that, that's kind of our mindset is, you know, don't rest on the, on, you know, and don't just sit back, like, let's go get it still, um, even though, you know, being safe, et cetera, et cetera, so. What is it like there where you are? Are things opening up? So in Florida right now, um, it's hot. There's a lot of pollen in the air, so allergies are terrible. No, uh, yeah, actually. Everyone's scared because everyone's sneezing. Right, right. So I was just in Savannah, Georgia this past weekend. And there was a St. Patrick's Day celebration. It was like spring break. So yeah, I mean, Florida has Florida hasn't been as strict as other states. So yeah. we've kind of stayed. I think it was per, pretty much only was it like maybe a month or two. Yeah. And, and then it, like the, you would go out and there would be no traffic on the road. It's like, man, this is so weird. And and pretty, but now it's back to like I, mm -hmm. I, I was on the way over here. I was like stuck in traffic, and it's like that hadn't happened while but uh but yeah it's traffic south people are out yeah you know it's, it's county by county here because there's some counties where they have no mask restrictions anymore um and then there's other counties where they do and it just it really depends but a lot of the places are open and there are shows starting to happen uh the, the, i mean since the pandemic there's been a lot of djs that have been doing dj shows like through the whole time and having like little raves and stuff but it, it's it's just you know, it just—it really depends on where you're at in the state. But there are a lot of places open, and there are shows that are slowly happening. Like because we have that show April 10th here in Orlando, so the venues are the venues here are are pretty. Some yeah. of them are some of them are strict on the mask policy, and some of them are very lax on it. So it just depends on where you're at. But Florida in general, I think, in comparison to most states, if anything, we were probably a little bit more relaxed than like anybody else. Oh yeah. So we noticed a difference, and there were time frames and like that we had to like be inside or so on and so forth, but right now it, it almost feels normal the only difference is is you might use a little more hand sanitizer and wash your hands more which is a good thing and you'll see people walk around with masks like masks are mandatory for the most part but it's, that, it's optional yeah much. it's like you know whatever you want to do you know yeah. it's like whatever you but for the so. most part everyone's just kind of back to normal everyone's back at work everyone's going to Universal and Disney and whatnot. I was you know? about to say, when Disney and Universal open, you know there's some sense of normal. 
We'll see. Come There's some back. sense yeah. of normalcy. So we're pretty, we're pretty cool over here. So what's the plan? Keeping out singles or just kind of wait or a full album coming in a few weeks? What's your guys' plan? Yeah, okay. so I mean, I you know, I always say I would love to make a whole record. You know, I would yeah, love for it's... all of us to just disappear for a month, get into a house, kind of like the way like say Incubus or Chili Peppers or Metallica, like bands have done historically in the past, lock ourselves away be creative and then see what comes out, you know, and hopefully we get like 12 to 15 songs. Um, is that practical in today's world? Probably not. I mean, unless you have the budget and the time to do it. Um, so I think, you know, for us, the plan is just, uh, you know, singles. Um, I realistically, I would, I would like to, you know, say that we could get three to four singles out this year um, with videos and campaigns behind them. Um, Maybe, I mean, maybe after we get enough singles, maybe do like a compilation kind of thing. And I, it's kind of been thrown around, like do a compilation, maybe throw like a never before, never before heard, you know, song on it, you know? Um, yeah. But, yeah. But we really do like production. And um, I think that's another thing that singles gives us the options to do. So when we go from single to single, we, we give you a color scheme, we give you a storyline, we give you music videos and photo shoots and whatnot. So you know, you can take anything that you want to your perception, but you could also really go in depth of like how we felt when we wrote a song or what the meaning is on our side of it. Um, so that's why we're sticking to singles for right now, just because our band's only two years old. And I feel at this moment, a lot of listeners and audience members are starting to get to know us. So we're just trying to give you like a very detailed concept for every single single that we have. So you know who you're kind of listening to and who you're supporting. Plus, the more singles you put out, the like better chance you with when you get to a point of say five or six singles that are already released and everybody knows them. When people come to your shows, they'll be singing right along mm -hmm. to all your songs, which is pretty awesome. That's like one of the coolest things is to see the crowd singing back to you while you're playing. Which happened once when we were at House of Blues, and mm -hmm. I like literally freaked out. <laughs> the song was up for like, what, two weeks. Yeah, two yeah. weeks. Our song within a week of it being released. Our local radio, WJRR, picked it up. And then two or three weeks later, we were at House of Blues. I think it was like our fifth show ever. And um, I was on stage and I started singing the first verse of Broken Lies. And I literally heard people singing it back to me. And I like, I like, I had to stop for three seconds. And then I realized I couldn't stop for three seconds because I'm on stage. And then I had to just jump right back into it. But it was an amazing moment and probably one of my peak moments being in this band. I have to say, you are very pretty. Does that put a lot of pressure on you as a front woman? Well, yes, it does. It puts a lot of pressure on me. I try to like lose <laughs> every night. Thank you so much, by the way. And uh, no, I'm just kidding. I'll let her answer that. You're um, yes and no. I, I love hair and makeup, so I am like a pretty girl, but... Um, Which she is going to do some tutorials soon. Yeah, and, so. and I'm thinking about that because... In the band, I, I, I've always been a writer, but I've never been a musician all my life. I'm probably the least, I am the least experienced person in this band. So does my look sometimes affect me? I would have to say 100% yes. Um, just because when, it, and it's not anything personal per se, it, it probably helps me, but it also can hurt me. When we do live shows, I'm one of the only girls ever in acts. And I get so excited when I get to play with other female fronted bands, because it is so cool to see like another girl on stage being like badass, but it is a little intimidating sometimes when you're the only girl and you're playing with everybody that's like covered up in tattoos, six inches taller than you, and they're screaming on the top of their lungs while you're in, you know, four inch stilettos and you're singing a song about Queen of the Damned and a shameless life. But I, you know, you get love and you get hate for whatever. And I think people appreciate it more now because like I said, with production, every outfit that I wear on stage, very rarely will I even wear an outfit twice. So it's something that I love. And um, I think people are appreciative. And that's why we were thinking about even uploading YouTube videos. And until, make, well, until it's four, then you'll just And then, tour, the and then I'm going to have to wear the same night. stuff. But yeah. I do love, I do love hair and makeup and pretty things. And I think it's really cool to commercialize something because then it gives a chance for people to give rock a listen. I think people always have this weird idea that rock music is like heavy and mean and it doesn't always have to be. So that's where my pretty little self comes in and writes. 
um, poppy lyrics on metal music. <laughs> it's not like you can just throw on a shirt and jeans and just walk out on the stage without brushing your hair like male singers can. Well, you can, but you know what I mean, right? Yeah. I think it's expected. It, it is expected. And actually, I think you're the first person to ever even ask me that question, which I fully respect and I'm appreciative that you asked that. And there is a lot of work. And granted, I don't have to pick up heavy equipment on stage. I mean, every now and then I have to help out with smoke machines and lights, but this makeup and hair process right now, maybe not so much, but when I go on stage, it's anywhere from a two to four hour process, especially when I have to put my body in a latex suit and then sing for 45 minutes while I'm doing weird and like dance moves with a pound of hair extensions in my hair. Like it's not comfortable, but, um, whether, and I, this is where I found my inspiration, Freddie Mercury's of the world, um, David Bowie's and whatnot. These were even guy artists. I really liked the idea. Um, Paul McCartney was probably one of my bigger inspirations, but these were like, um, these were artists that even though they were dudes, they really, took time into their image and kind of portraying a story a hundred percent because I, I won't be able to ever pick up a, I mean I guess I could if I ever learned but I won't ever be able to pick up a guitar and like show somebody a song all I can really do is act it out and sing it for you guys and that's another reason why the hair and the makeup and the pretty quote-unquote came about I've seen you guys got a lot of sponsors already good for uh, good for you guys very very proud of you i love that i really love that for you guys you guys seem like a fantastic fan i would love to see more from you guys i would love that thank you oh, yeah, man. Thank, you so much. Much. Thank, thank you thank you thank you how did you hook what thought how did you hook up with the sponsors so i mean there's different um there's different methods like to that mayhem um like the some of the sponsors that i've gotten over the years have been through either mutual friends or say like you know i was in a band that played somewhere or i approached them so there's like there's different ways of going about it you know and, and sometimes like our management company mdk um like they'll approach us with a company that's interested in working with us and that's kind of an easier route sometimes as a musician you kind of go hey like I'm so-and-so from the dev and I really like your products. Uh, and you know, this is what we've got going on and there's different tier levels of sponsorships and, and all that. So yeah, I mean, everybody's story is a little bit different. Yeah, but. De definitely. I mean, you know, and I mean, any, I guess anybody that's wanting to learn about how to get endorsements and sponsorships, never, I mean, never go into it thinking you're going to get something for free. Don't do it just to try to get free stuff, you know, and, and, I guess it's like you have to believe in their product as much as much as you want them to believe in you. Yep. And you know, so you they know, will judge your talents, and, yeah, and that's right. the way you also get sponsorships too. It's a business partner partnership. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're, you're not in it just to get free free stuff. You know? Yeah. It's yeah. like you truly like the stuff that you're you have yeah. that you either play or that you do. You know. Um, but and yeah. you have to be sensible also with the sponsorships that you pick up because for instance you'll notice that we're sponsored so when chris you know gets sponsored by sjc he's not only you know probably getting discounts and free things he's promoting something to the listeners and the audience members and you don't want to ever be caught promoting something that you're not in love with so different avenues you could always go to other bands and talk you can message them personally um, the way we got our Timber Creek sponsorship for a music video was through management, but they actually, I think like us. Yeah. yeah. But the base way to really get it is just to really put effort into yourself. And then you'll start noticing that other companies want to, um, invest in you and vice versa. So, I mean, I to start off, I guess, just invest in yourself, get really good and then learn how to communicate and grow out and talk to people and mingle. Yeah. And, you know, social media is a huge part of that too, you know, and that's the thing. It's like, sure, if you have a huge account, like I think people are going to be more apt to want to work with you, but also there's things and times where even when you're building, I think as a company, if you see like a young and up and coming person or just a, a like a musician or a band that's may not have the biggest, most impressive numbers, but you see them posting every day and they're getting good fan engagement 
And so a lot of times that opens the doors to where companies will be like, man, like I want to work with this, this band because they are, they're hustling, they're passionate. You can see that they care about what they're doing. And, you know, it's kind of like, you can't really fake it, you know, in music. I mean, I think fans and people in general can just see right through that. So, you know, if you really love what you're doing, you're going to put a lot of effort into it and really care. Mm -hmm. And then some of that payout becomes, you know, people want to work with you and, and people recognize that and see that. And uh, so, yeah, that helps as well. Yeah, and also a lot of people want an interview like that as example for SuffolkingCool.com and for me, you know? It's kind of like yeah. a lot of people interviewed you after that. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. And especially with us in interviews, we're, we're very like talkative and animated. We are. So I don't know if we drive people crazy or if they like it or we just like go on for hours and hours, but like, you know, it, we love it, you know? So we're still getting used to it also because yeah. I you know I always get nervous of talking too much or I'm always wondering. I will if, talk to your ear off for days. So we can be true. good best friends. I'll sit here and talk to you all night long. <laughs> Um, can I, uh, do, you, do you remember this background by any chance? Do we remember what? This background, because you want to know what? Suffolking calls my father. Oh, the background. He's asking. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. yeah, yeah. Sorry, we can't really see the background. Yeah. But because yeah, you guys it, are... it, it, it's like a photo of like Marilyn Manson. I remember the, the Manson photo, like right there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yeah, because when we interviewed with your dad, we were all separate on our own personal phones. Yeah. So this one we did together because you, you wanted to, you guys, uh, you asked us if we could play a couple songs. So we wanted to make sure that uh, we could do it properly. Yeah. As well. Yeah, we wanted to give you the performances, you know, so that's, that's, uh, hopefully your dad doesn't get jealous. Yeah, hopefully he doesn't get mad that we gave you the performances. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, no, oh, no, he's already jealous of me. Oh, no, 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 don't, no worries. No. <laughs> No, he was a great guy. He was a great guy. We had a lot of fun. And, you know, again, with that, with, with all the interviews, I feel like sometimes we just talk people's ear off and, you know, we're just like, I feel like sometimes I'm like, man, this person would never want to talk to me again because <laughs> I've just rambled on for, for forever and ever. But yeah, no, that's awesome, man. That's, it's great. That you guys are both doing it too. Um, you know, yeah. Hopefully you guys are having a good time doing it. Enjoy it. It's making my life change. This uh, this thing is uh, changed my life, so I love it. No, in my, I don't think it, there's nothing wrong with it. I think I'm actually good at it. I actually like doing it. It's fun to me. Oh, you're actually very yeah, good yeah, at it. Fun, man. Yeah, very yeah. very well spoken. Yeah, I mean, very well spoken, <laughs> and I think it's cool because I can tell that you have questions that you want to ask, but you're very good at like being quick on your feet because. There were questions like, for instance, the pretty remark and everything when people ask, I've never been asked that question before. And you think I would be since I'm like a female fronted act and I'm as extra as I am. There was a lot of cool questions that I don't think we've ever been. Yeah. And just think, you know, you're doing good now, but just think of how much better you're going to be in the future with all this experience you're getting. It's just going to make you better. So keep doing it, man. You're doing a great job right now. We really appreciate you having us on. Oh, no, there's much more. We're talking about much more. Do not end this quickly. There's much more. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah, don't worry. No, no, no worries. I'm staying here for 20 more years. Don't worry, guys. 20, 20 more. 20. There you go. There you yeah. go. Yeah, yeah, definitely. What is your favorite memory from playing the show, guys? Do you have any favorite? Well, my favorite memory by far is the House of Blues experience. Just because um, that was the moment that actually that was the moment that each and every one of us were on stage that night, even if we weren't all together in the band just quite yet. Um, our band members, we all trickled in. It, it wasn't just like, you know, I met Ryan and the whole band was done. Everyone slowly got added on. So it was Ryan, and then from Ryan, John went in, and then from John, it was me, Chris, and Barrett. So House of Blues, for multiple reasons, was my favorite experience. A, because House of Blues is an amazing stage to ever play on. So you really can't go wrong, but also the people singing back, um, my lyrics, getting close to Barrett, and finally, you know, finding that perfect guitarist to accompany Ryan, all of that, I think that's why House of Blues for me is my favorite experience. What is your worst? Do you have any worst falling off stage? Okay, so yeah, I mean, I have a ton <laughs> of those, those stories. Uh, I uh, quickly, 
I was in a band that played spring break in Panama City. And the band that I was in, I was stage left and my lead singer at the time decided to lean on me. And I was, I didn't know that he was going to do that. And uh, he ended up knocking me off stage. I, <laughs> I smashed my shin open and was bleeding. Luckily, my guitar stayed plugged in, like plugged in, and I was able to kind of still make some noise. I was trying to like scramble back up, but that was embarrassing. And mind you, the stage was probably about three to four feet high. So, I mean, it was a decent fall to where like my leg just didn't catch. Like I had to kind of like hop down as I was falling. Um, I was, I was in another band that we were on tour with Alice Cooper and we were opening for Alice Cooper and the night before the first show that we were playing or the second show i think it was we played a show in arkansas it was like a one-off where it was a headliner and this was like another female fronted band but it was more like metal like evanescence style like metal um and um so i had a little too much to drink and i got crazy and i ended up slicing up my right finger open you know and as a guitar player my right index finger is where i hold my pick so the next day during sound check, we're in St. Louis and my finger, I had to glue it shut because I didn't want to go get stitches because we were like on the road from Arkansas to St. Louis. And now granted, Alice Cooper is like, you know, the show where there's just, you know, there's props and, and it's theatrical and there's blood. And it's a darker show anyways. So halfway through the set, my finger opens up and starts bleeding everywhere, like profusely. And <laughs> I, now, like, it's on my right, right, you know, index finger. So that's so as I'm strumming like this, blood just starts splattering all over me, all over the stage. But the audience thinks that's part of the show, and they're just like, no one said a word. Everybody thought it was cool. Meanwhile, I'm just like, I thought my, I was going to lose my finger because it's just <laughs> bleeding everywhere, you know. And then I'm starting to get worried that like I'm gonna like pass out because am I losing too much blood? I mean, it probably wasn't that bad. Um, but yeah, I got a lot of stories. Some were a little bit more like you know rated r but yeah that, those are two like crazy stories of, of injury and i feel like eventually that stuff's gonna happen so you just have to be prepared for it um but yeah so it, it also shares no, there was that one time we played in uh was it st pete where i put my so we had this we had this guitar boat over here and uh i kind of broke it brand it was brand guitar. new and i broke it uh i was leaning forward to put my bass in it and i went to take a step and in front of the stage, there were these two big subwoofers and there was a slight gap between them. And that's where my foot went, was right in the gap. So in order to stop myself from falling face first off of the stage, I put my hand out and grabbed the guitar boat and I actually accidentally broke one of the pieces on it. Uh, and I did hurt my foot a little bit, not too, too bad. Uh, and then another time when I was in another band, way back in like the late 2000s, I actually fell off the side of the stage at a venue after we finished playing it was dark and you couldn't see on that side of the stage i had just put my bass in the ba in bass stand and i went to take a step with my left foot and i stepped right off the stage and because i couldn't see where the floor was i had no i, I had no gauge of where to put my hands so i basically just busted my tail on the ground and it, it wasn't fun I, I hurt my knee and my back and my shoulder but i mean i just rubbed a little dirt on it and that was all right um so you know how you were playing with your like thing and it was bleeding uh this is probably the fans in their head oh that's pretty cool that, that's pretty cool wow that actually yeah. looks bad but the, uh, but you ah! am i gonna pass out I'm <laughs> well yeah and, and okay so here's another part of that story is there was a tour documentary that was being done on the band i was oh, in at the time yeah. and uh I was at the merch table afterwards and there was a nurse that like, she was just at the show to see the show. And she was like, she actually knew that there was, my finger was messed up. Like, cause she, she came up to me and she was like looking at it and, and whatever, but I couldn't really like get too like, Hey, I'm in pain. I hurt. You know what I mean? Because I, I it was all filmed that night and, mm -hmm. and like on the bus that night was being filmed. And so yeah, I mean, it was pretty painful. I still have the scar to this day. And, um, but, you know, a little super glue, a little bit of liquid courage, and uh, I was okay. So, but um, yeah, it was, it was pretty rough for, for the time being. And it definitely was not fun to play the guitar for about a week. <laughs> so. What is uh, next for you guys? What's next for your band? 
So we're going to, you know, right now we're in the stages of, of working on the next single. Yeah. Um, it's where we're, we're very hands-on. So like some bands, every band's different in how they deal with the process of their music and their art. As a band, there's five of us and we're all very like hands on deck. Uh, there's five cooks in this kitchen, you know what I mean? And we so, all make something differently. And we're right. all, most, not, not for the most part. Of my life. Right, it, but it's not like we're combative. It's just, we've all got our artistic mindset. So right now we're like deep into like this next mix of the next single, but we're still promoting Shameless and, and whatnot. And then the other thing that we're doing is uh, we're shooting playthroughs for Shameless. So we're going to do a lot of like YouTube videos for, you know, the musicians out there. Um, and get it ready for the store too. And then the other thing. our space show together. Right. There is a lot going on. And yeah. I feel like we're in this like really weird, like in between her, where we're still promoting Shameless, but we're working on the next single, but we're also working on a tour and then everything in between. Yeah. Um, and, you know, our stage show too. Uh, you know, we, like, she was talking about her outfits and the makeup and everything. We, we value our stage show and we, we want to bring something to the person who comes to our show. And it's not just five people on stage playing music. We want to bring a show. I don't, we're, you know, we, I don't think we've gotten to that point where we're like the Rob Zombie Alice Cooper over the top theatrics. Flames yeah. and all that. Right. One, one day yeah. we could bring that. Yeah, I knew that would be nice. Right. So apparently, yeah. spark machines and flame things are like not, not allowed. Yeah. <laughs> so we kind of settled for our fog machines and, and like and lights, um, freedom yeah. sticks at the moment. Right. So we have we're programming our light show and we have our geysers and you know and just kind of like our choreographed sequencing of of how it all interplays with the songs because again, each of our songs has like a different color scheme and kind of like theme behind. The, the song itself so we're trying to really integrate that into the live show and this this little run is going to be like a great first test of like how everything is and plus you know there's a science to to making a set list i mean for us at least you know like somebody may listen to the set and, and not really you know care about the order but for us we want to put it into a flow so it tells a story so that you as a listener as an audience member gets a certain type of emotional you know kind of um feeling from it you know because a lot of our music is very different from the next song you know from each song to each song they all have different vibes and and um kind of different emotions so yeah we're working on a lot as as well as everyday life stuff you know and and, and all that so um yeah hope you're gonna hopefully be hearing a lot from us in the next couple of months i'm gonna follow you guys i love follow you Please do. Please yeah. do. Yeah, we'll follow right back. We are the yes. dev music on all social media platforms except for um, Instagram, where the dev band. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and they can get your music and all your cool merch there, correct? Yeah. If you go on our Instagram, the dev band, actually, we, we have, have a link tree. Yeah. yeah, we have a link tree. And you can check out our singles, our merch website, our music videos, interviews that we've done. Like everything is literally all right there for you guys. And we did that. So, it's accessible and you, you can see more. And are we, I uh, see, don't we have our names listed too, right? Our profiles. Do we have that? Yeah. 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 yeah so you can follow yeah. each, each of us if you'd like to, to kind of delve into our own little, like, which I would recommend because, you know? um, like, Chris and, and, and John and Ryan and Barrett, they all upload um, different video clips of them playing guitar, explaining things that they use, so on and so forth, which is another reason why we're doing the playthroughs because if you ever love one of our songs so much, you'll be able to actually. Just go on our YouTube and you can learn from Ryan himself or, or Chris himself exactly how to play it. I just upload pretty photos because uh, unless I'm doing singing videos all the time, which I guess I could and I should, but. Oh, there's a singing video of you in the story today. Oh, yeah, yeah, there is. So, I mean, you never know with us what you're going to get. Yeah. You know, so, surprises all, put your makeup on here. along the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do unboxings of cool rock stars with merch. If you guys want to, you know, hook a brother up, <laughs> please. Yeah, you know, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The Queen of the Damn shirt, I think, would, would look probably pretty good on you. Yeah, you yeah. can have my pretty face on you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just gotta let us know what size you wear, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah messages. Messages on the Instagram, Facebook, whatever, whatever your preference. And uh, let us know uh, the size that you want. We'll send you we'll send you a bunch of stuff like stickers magnets yeah. and stuff like that yeah we got some actually some new merch that nobody's seen yet we're kind of doing some tests on it and um yeah you, you actually get some of that 
So be one of the first ones to, to get it. Guess what? Thank you, actually. No, thank you. Guess you. Thank you. But guess how old I am. I want you guys to know how old I am. Guess. I was thinking nine. Yeah. Wow. Wow. You actually got it right. Nobody literally got it right at all. Wow. First yeah, of all, I was thinking like, like 13, 14, but I don't know. That's just probably because you're well spoken. You yeah. Know what I'm yeah. Yeah. I'm very so. matured. Yes. Yeah. Very mature. Like very mature. Yes. I know. I talk like a Nigerian girl. It's not by, I just talk like that. Just talk like that. Well, well, thank you for being on my show, guys. I hope the next time we talk is not the back stage of one of you guys' shows. Love to see you. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thank, thank you so, you so much, much for having us. So Tell your dad we said, hey, what's up? Oh, he's right here. <laughs> you want to talk to him? Come on, dad, please. Come on, do it. <laughs> dad, please. He's over there. Like, All right. no. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And so again, thank you for having us. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Bye, have a great time, guys. Yeah, yeah, have a good one. Take care. Enjoy your guys' self. Peace. Have a good one. Have a good one.